Okay, <laughs> we're gonna try this again. <laughs> we went live once before, but it said that we had no signal. And uh, so now we're finally getting something that says we are live. Before, we didn't get that. And so we're trying it again. I think this is probably a glitch with Facebook. You know, we haven't been on for about three months. And uh, so uh, things change with Facebook. Here, now we're live. Hi, Linda, how are you? Hi, Lori, nice to see you. Really nice to see you. Hi, Jody. Hi, Happy Jody. New Year and Garen. Uh, nice to see you and Patty. We are live. Frank, you know, we, we actually had stopped being live and we, we cut it and we went back. Hi, Karen. <laughs> um, and anyway, so it says put a mask, put on a mask, but that was from something else. I don't know what that means. Anyway, hi, Sherry. Anyway, Darlene, nice to see you and Jackie. It's been such a long time. It's been three months. Um, I, I, I just want to say a couple of things before we start. I want to say hello to Ellie, whose husband's in the hospital, and so she can't join us today, but we'll t we're just waving hello, and I hope that he's well. Uh, my high school friend, Debbie Fernaz, she's not feeling so hot and had an episode this weekend, and we're not getting any younger, and I hope you're feeling better. And Sherry Starr, who is one of our cupcakes, recently lost her husband, and I... I'm really sorry about that. And of course, my old buddy, Bonnie Esmanshay, passed away um, since the last time I talked to you uh, in November. And frankly, I am still dealing with it. It's the hardest thing I've ever dealt with. And I just, I, you know, you read about the stages of grief, but you don't know what it is. Anyway, for those of you who don't know, I had uh, been in the hospital again. And we'll just get through this very quickly. I had been in the hospital again. I'm in kidney rejection. I've been going for mega drips of, of steroids. And I was in the hospital on like, what, 400 to 500 milligrams of steroids a day that blew out all my veins. And then I was going every, you know, every day at the hospital and then every other day and then every third day. And so um, uh, right now I'm basically a mess. <laughs> um, the kidney has stabilized. Uh, it's not great. I am going to be needing a new kidney probably sometime. Um, they've offered to let me go on dialysis because I've had such a bad, bad reaction to the medication. Um, and really bad to the medication. I'm on like 30 some pills a day. Um, but I decided not to, and I'm just going to wait it out. Um, yeah, I'm saying they've offered to let you go into jail. This <laughs> hardly seems like the right thing to say. Yeah. Hey, uh, thanks. Yeah. That's so I'm going to wait it out and uh, I'm going to, you know, stay, you know, as healthy as I can. I, you know, I put on a ton of weight with the steroids. I'm going to have to go back on some kind of uh, diet. And, um, and um, you know, I think 2017 is going to be fine. I just needed to. You know, just give you a little update. I still can't travel. I still am, have to wear a mask, and I've been wearing a mask outside the house for three months. But look, frankly, I've been so tired, I haven't been going out of the house all that much. Except, you know, to get my driver's license <laughs> or to go to the hospital. But anyway, Happy New Year, everybody. I'm glad to see everybody here. And as my friend Liza says, that's enough of the organ recital. Um, I want to show you something that we're going to do today. Are you ready? I love this. We are going to toast you, and I'm going to teach you how to make the best Irish coffees ever before we start this whole thing. And then I'm going to show you some of the great stuff that I have and share with you some of this new fabric and some of these new books I got and when I, my New Year's resolution, and um, just a bunch of stuff, stuff from Craftsy. I, I, I'm anxious to, I so, have so much to show you. Please tell me we're doing the drinking first. Yeah, we are. We are. Okay. Yeah. Did you bring a spoon? Oh, you need a spoon? Well, you're, oh, come on. Listen, you can't, you can't trust the guy. All right, so first, you put in about a tablespoon of brown sugar, right? A tablespoon of brown sugar in your cup, your coffee cup. Then you fill it with coffee. No, I'll do it so you don't burn Not yourself. a lot. Tell me when. Just a little bit. Okay, that's fine. Just a little bit of coffee. Um, see, just a little bit, just so that you can mix up this brown sugar. So it helps it dissolve, right? Yeah, it makes okay. it dissolve. Now, here's the magic part. Now, that dissolves very quickly. Look, you can see. It dissolves very, very quickly. Now, here's the next thing. This is the magic wow wow to this recipe. And then I'm going to show you what I got Mr. Electric for Christmas. All right, here we go. Ready? Happy New Year, Dorothy. Happy New Year, Gina and Melinda. All right, so first you put in a jigger of 
Jameson Irish Whiskey. This is like really good stuff. I like it. It's, it's expensive too, isn't it? Yeah, it's about $30 a bottle. Yeah, $30 okay. a bottle. You know what? Buy a $10 bottle because if your liver's going, who gives a shit whether it's $30 or $10? All right, so what you do is that you put in one jigger full... Oh, that's a full jigger there. Look at that. Well, you, well, that's what a jigger is. All right. You put in one jigger full of the Irish whiskey. All right. You mix it up. But here's what gives this something magic. All right. This is the magical part of my, and I made this one up. <laughs> because, you know. I want you to notice how much is left in the bottle. Too. More this is, is better. Ready? Ready? <laughs> it's Smirnoff whipped cream flavored vodka whipped cream flavored vodka. So then I put in a jigger of that. There you go. Pour it in. So now you have your two jiggers of liquor, your little bit of coffee, I know, right? And your tablespoon of brown sugar. Now you fill the rest with coffee. I assume you're making this for me since you've only Made one. Done one, yeah. Is that enough? Well, I have a lot more? of talking to do. So, you know, that's enough. That's, a, yeah, right. that's enough. All right, now here's, the, here's another magic thing. Now, there's no Irish whiskey without cream, right? I mean, no Irish coffee without cream. You have to have cream. So look at this. My friend Jill, that I used to work with and who now lives in Los Angeles, we were FaceTiming while I was ill, and she had this contraption that she loved. And so I bought one from Mr. Electric. Very inexpensive for Christmas. But you just get some... You can do this with regular milk. I have cream today, right? I have some cream, look at that, into a glass. And it's this thing. I got it on Amazon, through a, uh, and it's pretty amazing. It's a little whisk, and it's battery operated. Now watch this. Now, I use it in the mornings with half and half, right? Right. And I get it all frothy, and then I pour the coffee in. It sounds it's, like the battery's going. Well, it's just, it's not getting any air when you go down. The battery's definitely going. All right, well, we'll get new ones in. Well, now it's not going to froth up. It's, it's totally doing it. It's totally not doing it. He is... It's not doing it. You can hear that the battery's not working. Do you want me to go get the batteries? Yes. It looks like thick to me. It's it's whipping it, but it's not making it frothy. Anyway, look. So here's what we have so far. Look. We have the dogs barking, but look, it whips like that. Isn't that amazing? And it will do that with, um, yeah, see, listen. You can hear those batteries. I don't know what he's thinking. But um, it also works with just regular like low-fat milk, non-fat milk. It's pretty amazing. Well, the half and half worked really well when I did that. The half and half, amazing, amazing. Now, this is whipping cream. So this is the first time we're using that. We've also done it with eggnog, which it doesn't work all that well with eggnog. Um, but honestly, the, the um, half and half is like going to... There you go. There we go. Now we're going to listen. Ah, hear the difference? Okay. Well, what it is is a switch. All right. Now, there you here's go. the spoon. Okay, here's the spoon. Now, hold up the cup because they can't see. Ready? Look at this. Uh-huh. That's what I'm talking about. Uh-huh. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, now you make yours. Really? Mm-hmm. Uh, this is delicious. I bet. There's something wrong about this. Okay, this is amazing. This is amazing. So, you know, it's, uh, it's a jigger of Irish whiskey, a jigger of whipped cream vodka, which makes it taste like a dessert. I mean, it's amazing. With coffee, one tablespoon of brown sugar, sugar. and yep. whipped cream or whipped half and half with this little thing and um, with this little tool, whipping tool. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you um, on my blog... This week, probably tomorrow, uh, when I post it, where you can buy one of those things. It's amazing. You're going to have to have one. Wait till you see what it's like with um, just with half and half. You won't believe it. You won't believe it. I mean, it, with half and half, that whole thing, rather than whipping like a whipping cream, it would have just frothed up to the top. It's, it's amazing. Anyway, you have, uh, you know, of course, it's the first day of the year. 
Um, do you have any um, New Year's resolutions? Yeah, that I'm shifting the copper pot responsibilities over to you. I will not be doing, just for the record, I have been very good about doing the copper pots. I've now proven that I can do it, and I think Mark needs to step up to the plate. Well, you know what? Up. Listen, he lets me brag about him on FaceTime, but then the other morning I came downstairs to, and he had did, done the dishes in the morning, and he left the copper pot bottom dirty. And so I had to redo it. I had to rewash the pot. There are worse things in life than that travesty, so you just get Listen, to get past it. It's all about control right now because I'm so out of control <laughs> with my everything else. I need that. I don't have a New Year's resolution. Well, let me say this. I guess that I should make a really big New Year's resolution, and I'm suggesting you make a really big New Year's resolution, too. But I know that I can't keep it for more than a week, so I might as well go for broke and tell you I'm going to change the world and cure cancer. I thought you were already working on that, no? No, no, no I'm not. I'm sorry, I have to mix my half and half. Kathy says that she got her tool at Ikea. Oh, is by the way, this, this is like a lifetime guarantee. I think it was only like 20 bucks or 22 bucks or something like that. But it's like a lifetime guarantee. The, the, the people will keep taking it back. It's just pretty amazing. Well, it's pretty amazing. if you keep the batteries going. Mm -hmm. I thought the batteries were working fine, but I guess for whipping this, they didn't right. do it, right? Now, look at this coffin neck. It's got to go. So this is my last day for whipped cream. Well, anyway, they're saying that, that this New Year's, it's not about losing weight in spite of the coffin neck. It's about treating people better. And so the majority of people, for the first time since, what did I, since uh, 2014, diet and weight loss was not the number one New Year's resolution. But treating people better and treating yourself better is the New Year's resolution. Would, wouldn't losing weight be part of treating yourself better, though? It's about treating other people better. We're talking oh, more right. abstractly. Okay, go ahead. All right. right. So Explain anyway. that word to me later on. Yeah, I will. Um, anyway, so the other top resolutions are spending less and saving more. Well, we're broke, so we couldn't save any. We, we couldn't spend any we less. We save every day. But here's the good news. Here's the good news. If you were poor when you started out in your adulthood, like Jeff slept on the floor in his Brooklyn apartment, yeah. I literally lived in a slum for three years with... Uh, borrowed furniture and a small black and white TV that I bought secondhand at a junk store for years. Um, that actually not having the money has been not only humbling, but it's been really an it's you can do it. You can save money. You don't need all this stuff. It would be nice, you know, when big ticket items go, like refrigerators or stoves, yeah. or you know, your shutter falls off the house, your car. My car, <laughs> right. It would be nice to have extra money for that. But in terms of day-to-day -day living, you really can do with much less. So that was a good lesson to learn this year. The other good lesson was that people are kind. And I hope that I could be kind this year, or more kind. And I think, um, yeah, I want to get rid of my coffin neck, but I really wish I were a little more kind. Um, and I want to tell you again, I want to thank you for the GoFundMe page that Meg and um, Liza Lucy started Last year, we could not have gotten through the year without it. We no. couldn't have. And and I want to thank you. I mean, you know, as a quilter, you don't make a whole lot of money anyway. But it was it, it saved us. You saved our family. And I, I want to thank you again. Now, the thing that they're saying now in terms of, which I read in the paper this morning, interestingly enough, was that to be um, more present for people is about being more authentic. And I'm thinking, well, you know, that's such an Oprah Dopra word. You know, what the hell is authentic? But there are, the, I did find it, so I looked it up, and there are some things about uh, habits of people who are authentic. And so, um, so Oprah says, speaking of authentic, she said that she had no idea that being her authentic self could make, he, make her as rich as she'd become. Well, that's a little bloated as far as I'm concerned. Speaking I must really be holding back. I know. <laughs> I thought I was pretty authentic. Apparently I'm not if it's tied to money. All right, I'm yeah. just going to tell you, I think she's full of shit there. But here we go. Here's how to be authentic. Are you ready? They help others to be their authentic self. And I hope I can do that. I, I don't hold back, and I don't like when people hold back with me. And you know what? I see that in the quilt world an awful lot, that people... Or, you know, when you have your own business, you have to be, you know, you have to play a game. That's one thing. I get it. Um, the other thing is, um, you know, there's this good girl, good boy thing. 
if it goes against who you are it's, and it's an act and you're not happy, then stop it. But being authentic doesn't mean you're mean. It just means you're being transparent. No, but it's yeah, different. right. I mean, totally I, right. It doesn't mean you're being an ass, but it does right. mean that you don't put on an act. You're not a goody two shoes when right. you don't really feel like it. You don't. You're not a doormat. Right. No, I agree with that. You know, you help and you help others be that by being who you are. You know, it's something when you share what you're upset about, the secrets in your life. This is what I found with me: the illness issues with fam my mother, blah, 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 blah. When you share and you're transparent with that stuff, you will find 7,000 other people who share that that experience. So, uh, and that's how you help other people be authentic. All right, let go of negative people. That's a hard one for me because I'm a people pleaser. We'll have to talk later on. I, yeah, but... he's not. He's like, eh, bye. <laughs> I would, I, 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 you know, you could beat me, and I'm like, come back, come back. Well, we talked about this before. I, I'm kind of a believer. You just go, that's it, and you move on to the next thing, because if it's draining you, it's just not worth it. No, it's not good. But um, here's what I have done. Are you ready? I love this little book. I want to share my secret book with you. Although it's no secret, if you have a drug addict, an alcoholic, a uh, loveaholic, a foodaholic, any holic in your family, you've probably seen this book. It's called Courage to Change. It's a day to day book. Every day has a new reading and a new meditation. And I don't really, you know, I read it, I don't really meditate on it. But, um, and, you know, it's for like, I guess this is for alcoholism, maybe. But yeah, it is, definitely. They talk about the drinker or whatever. But put it towards your own life. This book is amazing for setting boundaries and not being so codependent. So, I like this. And realizing setting boundaries is not a bad thing. Right, right. And it's so, okay. if you're having a problem with work, you're having a problem with people, it really helps me navigate people in the world. And it's really, I think, this book has really um, kind of filed the rough edges sometimes. And it's really gotten me through times where I, like, you know when you're worrying about your kid and they're not, like responding or you're not answering your phone calls or they're being a big ass because you can't tell a kid anything and you've got to staple your tongue to the roof of your mouth because anytime you say anything to them, it's like I, you, you're a dumb idiot and they know everything and then they fall on their face and then they still, you know, right. you know, or I'm hanging up now or I'm not going to talk to you or don't tell me what to do. This book saves me <laughs> and it happens. And, and so that's my thing. So that's about letting go of negative people and I've been able to do that with this book. I don't know whether they sell it on Amazon. I don't know whether they sell it, you know, where they sell it. I know you can buy a copy at, like, Al-Anon meetings or... Well, it has an ISBN number, so that means it's okay. registered yeah, somewhere. Yeah, it says it's sure. under uh, Recovery Self-Help. It's, it's part of the Al-Anon group. It's the Al-Anon. So, it's good. You know, I always... You know, I went to Al-Anon. I, I, well, talk about transparency. I went to Al-Anon when my son moved out. Because he moved out, he was angry with me, he wasn't talking, he was doing his own thing, he was making choices that I didn't agree with, and I was having a nervous breakdown. <laughs> yep. I was losing it. I was losing it. I couldn't sleep. I would wake up first thing in the morning. I t I've talked about this pretty openly. Um, to check who got killed in Brooklyn the night before and all that kind of stuff. And then finally, I thought, I need to go someplace. And I, I went to Al-Anon. And uh, it worked. And um, I would think everybody should be an Alan on now. now. Now, by the way, just for the record, he does not have a drug problem. He does not have a drinking problem. He does not have an eating problem. He has none of the aholic problems, nor do I, except I am a codependent aholic, I guess. And I couldn't let go. And this was good. It was good. It gave me boundaries. And it helped me let go. So courage to change. I only went for a couple of months. You only need to get what you need and share what you want to share. And then you can take off. I mean, I think there are people who were in, you know, who needed it much more than I did or much longer than I did. I didn't. Things resolved in themselves. Um, okay, so another thing to be authentic is that you express your true feelings and opinions even when they're not popular. And that's how I keep losing friends on Facebook because I write what I think. And if you like it, that's great. And if you don't like it, I can't help it. I'm not responsible for it. What? Well, well, the flip side of it is, is they have to allow that of the other person, too. It can't just be a one-way kind of thing. I mean, sometimes you just have to agree to disagree. That's what makes things interesting. You know? Yeah, I, I get how, it. This well, it you know, they, this whole Trump thing has made me nuts, and it's made a lot of people nuts, and people are just... 
blocking people and, and defriending, unfriending them and all that yeah. kind of stuff, or why are you talking about it? My page is a safe place to talk about it. And I have friends who voted for Trump. I, there are some things for Trump that I like. I didn't really like everything Hillary said. I didn't even like Hillary at all, frankly, but I voted for her. I've been very open about that. But, you know, I think it's a place to talk if you want to talk. All right, so that's that. So I know when I'm not popular when I lose 10 friends a day. <laughs> and you know what? Those are 10 friends I didn't need anyway. So get the hell out. All right, so that's that. Could mean you're doing something right. That's right. Okay, they are confident. Now, I'm not confident. Well, I know you and I know that I'm a big wussy. You're kind of shy and whatever. People don't believe that, but it's true. Yeah, and I'm not confident. I'm not confident. And especially when you have this hanging. Mm-mm. Girl, daddy's got to go. And the ass is bigger than the chin. Just means you have extra confidence. That's all that means. Just... <laughs> I just need a little confidence to see whether I'm going to fit through a door. That's, what's ha that's what I'm confident about. Someday we'll be doing this from the outside. Like I'll have to, you know. A remote location. A remote location, <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, authentic people also prefer deep conversations to meaningless chatter. Like yes. this. <laughs> totally meaningless chatter. I do like deep conversations, and I think most of... Uh, I, I, okay, this is a stretch. that I'm going out on a limb here. I happen to think... Oh, boy. Oh, well. Here we go. Ready? Oh, God. I'm glad there's two shots in here. I happen to think, generalization, that most quilters, makers, crafters... Are authentic in that way. I think they prefer deep conversations to meaningless chatter. I do. I think that, right. and I'll tell you why I think that. I also think, in terms of quilters and makers and knitters and and rug hookers and you know crocheters and you just name the gamut, artists, whatever. Maybe not artists, but you know, fine artists, but even fine artists. I don't. Me, you. I don't think you're the most popular kid in school. I don't. I think I that, wasn't. I was well, that wasn't. makes sense. But some people might be surprised. <laughs> uh, but, uh, Get <laughs> but, you know, I think that we, in general, were not like the ones who were the popular kids. And so, um, and by the way, even if it looked like we were the popular kids, because I think it probably looked in high school that I might have been a popular kid. But if you don't feel it inside, then it's worthless. It means nothing. So, um, so I do think that as makers, we are more serious and we're more thoughtful and we get inspired by those deep conversations and by questioning what is the world, what is life, what are we here for, how, do the, every, how does everything interact, and that's what makes us artists, whether we're working in fabric or whether we're working in pastel or we're working in, you know, natural clay dyeing or whatever. So, but if I, you've I always been on the outside... I think you have to develop that inner sensibility. Mm -hmm. And at some point, you kind of crave that connection with other people. And I think the other thing that works against us is most of society is set up for short quips. Yeah. You know, it's not meant for that long-term stuff. We're busy. Yeah. And uh, I, it was an Eileen, and it went quickly, who said that we also are, we have an eye for detail, and we like detail. Right. Uh, Suzanne says we're kind. Well, I've been to enough... Quilt guilds to know that that's not true. <laughs> Who's kind? Uh, just uh, uh, creative people. Uh -huh. um, no, I don't think that's true at all. I don't think kindness is The in poor there. ones are. <laughs> once they've made some money, they're not so No, that's not <laughs> true. That's not true. Um, I, but I think that, yeah, I don't think kindness comes with that. Um, but I do think that being creative comes with deep meaning. Um, okay, they don't take anyone's advice without evaluating it carefully. Well, that's true of creative people. They always ask why. Yeah. They want to know. They want answers. I get it. Yeah. There's I, a thought process there that I think is a lot deeper. Oh, Lori's asking if my eyes are different colors. Are my eyes different colors? No. You think? They look the same. Well, you know, I, I can't see out of this eye anymore since I got sick in October. You, want, you know that, right? So I can't see anything much. Um, this eye I can still see. So, And it's not cataracts. You're so, also closer to the light on that side. Yeah, that so maybe that's showing the eye. All right, this is the other thing. They don't complain about their problems. All right, now here's oh, the thing. Oh, come on. No, I, I think authentic uh, people don't. And I think that's something I'd like to change this, this uh, year. I hate being the whiner. I feel like I'm always saying, I'm sick, I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm sick. 
Well, then people got to stop kidding. asking you how you're doing. No, I, uh, <laughs> they don't. It's not your fault. I, no, I, they don't. I offer it, and I think that's what I have to stop. I don't like that. So that's one thing. So do you complain about your problems? Do you? Because if you do, they're not interested. And here's the, <laughs> nobody's interested. And guess what? I know nobody's interested, but I don't, I can't see anybody. So you're my only friend. So that's why I dump on you. But I have to tell you, I need to stop complaining. So, so that, think that's somebody, my New Year's resolution. So do you think if somebody asks you how you're doing, that they don't really want to know how you're doing? Is I, that, is that what it is? Or? I, I, well, no, I think if somebody asks, then they ask. But you know, sometimes I just post, boy, I'm having a really shitty day and this really sucks. And I have like my, my chin is hanging over my belly button. That's a problem. So I complain too much, and uh, I I'm, that's what I want to stop. So does Sarah, so she's going to work on that. Yeah, I Sarah is, it's, well, I, we know Sarah. Sarah is a big complainer, right? <laughs> Boy, you don't want to get on her Facebook page, because all she does is complain. <laughs> all right, so uh, authentic people also make the best of, out of every situation, and I think that's another thing that creative people do that the general population do not. I think that we are more, and I, again, sweeping generalization, but I don't care because it's in our favor. But I think that creative people, whether you're, and this goes beyond the arts and the makers. I'm talking about all the people I knew who were television producers and writers and editors. You know, you have to think on your feet. And when, when shit hits the fan, they make the best out of every situation. When you cut your fabric wrong, you make a new pattern. Uh, when, when you pick the wrong color, you put it in anyway. So I think that's, uh, I think that is, uh, interesting. I think that we do, creators make the best of that. So generally, I think, uh, quilters, makers are generally more authentic than the general population. They don't get stressed or upset when someone doesn't like them. Oops. That's what, did I tell you about my book urge to change? <laughs> I get very upset. Now I might, you know, when I, and I think this happens to all of us, right? You'll type something and somebody will take offense with it, whether it's a joke or not. And then you're like, oh my God, did I insult them? Or are they upset? Whatever. Um, and yeah, I worry about it. I, I would rather take a bullet than hurt somebody's feelings intentionally. I would agree. For but you it, or for me? For you. Oh boy, I need another drink. So anyway, yeah. <laughs> so Melissa says she's very positive. She's positive she's nuts. Well, at least she has a good attitude about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Jan says that how are you is a rhetorical question. People don't really care. They don't really Well, that's know. true. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, you go, oh, I'm okay. I mean, even if you're, you know, if your uh, left lung is hanging out of your elbow, you're like, I'm fine. <laughs> okay, so, so that's that. Uh, hi, Sherry Collie. I didn't see you here. Hi, Sherry. Sherry's our uh, old neighbor and one of my BFFs, and I love her, and I don't see her enough, and she's, she's a wonderful person. She's an old neighbor or an old neighbor? She's an old neighbor who's actually older than me, so I'm going to... Oh, I'm gonna, listen. We'll I, be hearing from her later. Li right? I'm still in my 50s. I'm just telling you. Um, <laughs> Sherry, I wouldn't guess you were a day over 35, so just remember <laughs> I said still that. Okay? In my 50s. I'm still in my 50s. So Laura says that she actually lost some good friends because of the election, and it really bothers her. Where Margaret says your attitude is a choice, and I believe that, but sometimes you just feel creepy. Um, you know, we talk about thin skin. Um, how are, oh, so somebody's thinking it's social noise. Um, being, sick, being sick adds to the whining. It does. But I, you know, that's not a, a thing. Um, Sally says she cares if a person has been sick. But Sally, your your um a, your emotional IQ because I know you is probably through the roof. I'm not sure you couldn't use a little bit of courage to change. <laughs> I love you. You know, I love you like a sister. But you know, your emotional IQ. You're so sensitive and empathetic, and you've also been through a lot. So you through your own experience, you know, with health in your family, etc. I think that that's an issue. Um, Okay, so Karen says, if you ask, hi, Karen SMJ, that's Bonnie's daughter. If you ask a German how they're doing, they will tell you in detail. <laughs> Is that true? <laughs> I grew up with a lot of Germans around me, and I don't ever remember that. That's really funny. I don't know. I, I got, I don't know. The po I, you know, the Italians, if you ask how they're doing, they're always in crisis, and the Polish are cold. They don't really say much. They, they don't, they kind of deny it. All right. Um, 
Yeah, Sherry, I do think that being authentic is, means that you're true to yourself. And I think that's what this is. Yeah. I think, you know, not making others happy with you. I think that's what this is all about, really. Laura, I'm with you. I'm much too sensitive. My son is also, look at him sideways, completely sensitive. And we both clash because of that, I think. Right. I mean, he'll say something, I'll say something, and we're both, like, uh, crying. So, um, it, it's not good. <laughs> oh, Karen, not American Germans, from Germany Germans. Oh, good. Well, then you'll know we won't be visiting Berlin anytime soon. <laughs> um, uh, so Sherry says she also wants to know how people are doing. Um, which depends on who the person is. If it's somebody I care about, then I genuinely want to know. Yeah. If it's somebody I meet at a store, I don't really care. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I usually don't ask that question then. Oh, right. so Becky says that when they lived in Korea, they always asked uh, if you were hungry. And that means, are you okay? I'd be triple my size in Korea. I guess we're not going to Seoul either. <laughs> anyway, uh, how is my bear, Mark? How is your bear? Oh, my bear! Uh, Ronnie, it's fine. She's in my um, my Hello Kitty bear that Ronnie made and sent me. Is in, um, it sits on the bed. It sits on the bed, yeah. It's there. I'm with that bear all the time. I love that bear. I love that. As a matter of fact, I, you know, there's nothing I want to tell you, speaking of pathetic, and that's that. I mean, there, that's it. If you want to see this, I, I don't remember who did this. This is from Dr. Travis Bradbury. Um, so look up Dr. Travis Bradbury. He's the one who wrote the 10 mistakeable, unmistakable habits of utterly authentic people. There's a bunch of them here. Um, uh, I just want to say that everything and anything and anyone has ever made for me and has sent me as a gift, as a get well gift, as a birthday gift, as, you know, even if they make homemade postcards to send me, they're framed or they're they're somewhere shown. Yeah, they're out. I, I don't, you know, I don't um, ever put anything away. I mean, for like that. Those things are so meaningful to me. Uh, as a matter of fact, Trisha Maloney, who is the author, you might know her, and the designer, who actually took a class of mine in Meadville many years ago, Meadville, Pennsylvania. Um, and this is like her third book, I think, that she has coming out now. But she sent me this over the Christmas holiday. I, I just love it, and I know where it's going. I love this. It's a very simple quilt. And um, it, it actually, she made it in 2014. Here's her little hanging, her little label, right? Um, but I love this quilt, and I know exactly where it's going to hang. But when people send me quilts, I have quilts hanging everywhere. I have them at, oh, everywhere. They're over, they're over uh, the railing, chair, they're over on, the the railing wall, on the chairs, yeah. they're on the wall. People who send me stuff, they're there. And um, so she sent me this. And I just loved it, so thank you, Trisha. But also, I just want you to know that she wrote a new book, which is uh, interesting, I think. She wrote this book, and it's actually for beginners, too. It's called I Love Pre-Cut Quilts. It's by, um, it is, it's also available in ebook, but it's uh, by C&T Publishing. And there are 16 different uh, quilts in here that you could use, and it's all using pre-cuts. Now, some of these quilts are really very Sweet. I love a lot of these quilts that she did. But again, they're very beginner, very modern looking quilts. But again, they're also all done with pre-cuts. So you might want to pick up this book. I think she did a really nice job with it. And, um, and they're really easy and fun to do. Now, as you know, and I don't want to be a big hypocrite, not on the first day of the year, because Marianne Fawn says whatever you do on the first day of the year is what you do for the rest of the year. So we'll be drinking the rest of the I, year. I know. Okay. I'm going to be whipping up some whipped cream. I'm going to look. But here's what, here's the thing. Um, I hate pre-cuts. I'm not a fan of pre-cuts. It's just not my thing. So, um, but having said that, I love the idea of the quickness of pre-cuts. What I don't like about pre-cuts and pre-cut, you know, like you go, like for instance, you'll buy Trisha's book because there's some great quilts in here. But what will happen is that you, you'll buy a pre-cut, you'll buy a pre-cut, you'll buy a pre-cut, you'll buy the same pre-cut, and then right. all the quilts look alike, basically. What I like about the pre-cuts is that they're so easy to manipulate, they're so easy to use, but what I like to do is make my own pre-cuts from the fabric that I choose. So if a, a quilt calls for, you know, a layer cake pre-cuts, then I'll buy enough fabric to make my own layer cakes out of the fabrics that I choose, not out of some manufacturer's hand-picked 
um, group. His inventory. That they're right, their inventory, of. right. So, um, so, and that's what makes an interesting quilt. We know that if we use all the same line, that it's not interesting. Even when we were designing fabric, I hated using all of my, having to use all of my fabric in a line because it's just boring. Um, and so I, I'm telling you, when you pick up Trisha's book, um, what you want to do is make your own two inch, two and a half inch strips out of your stash or out of your, or go to this, your local quilt shop or whatever and buy that kind of stuff. I, and you're going to get, um, I think you're going to end up being much happier with the quilts that you make. That's what I think. Um, so, uh, I, I, I like this book a lot. And I love her. Look how cute she is. She's adorable. Hey, do you know Trisha? Yeah. Do you know her? She's adorable. And she's written, as I said, she's written several uh, uh, quilts. Now, if you used to listen to Creative Mojo, she wrote the book on uh, the Russian journey, a Russian journey in quilts. Remember with, I think that was with Kansas City Star books. This one's with C&T. But it was a fascinating book and a fascinating story. So you might want to pick that up while you're picking up this too. Um, and I'll put that all on my website. But really consider um, choosing your own fabrics. And, and making your own pre-cuts when you buy pre-cut books. And I hope she sells a sh ton of these. Um, and I love you, Trisha, and thank you. And this uses jelly rolls, charm squares, layer cakes, fat quarters, and more. And make your own. Make your own. Make it an interesting quilt. Own it. Own it. Whoops, sorry. This is something. AccuQuilt does, AccuQuilt Go does have two inch dot, strip die, and I also have an app, uh, like a big, like a professional one, and I have the two inch strips, or two and a half inch strips as well. So, um, now, Sarah says that using the same line is the only way she can match. That's crazy, Sarah. You know, the only way that you learn is by doing. Now, you know, I couldn't choose fabric at all. I have a really bad eye or had a really bad eye for color. Jeff, who, by the way, is colorblind, has a really good eye for it. But one of my tricks was that I went to my local quilt shop years ago, before I had the magazine even, and once I started quilting seriously, I went to... Um, to the local quilt shop and ask if I could volunteer and work there just to see, to help, just to see how a quilt shop worked and how people <clears throat> match fabrics and what people wanted and what they were interested in. And that's where I learned how to match fabric. And then I started working there like what, maybe two days a week. Yep. And then I went to another quilt shop and worked maybe one or two days a week for a little while. And, um, and it was illuminating, and I learned how to choose my fabric. So see if you can do that. The quilt shop can use some help, always can use some help, and um, provided you're not crazy, and <laughs> well, you're not going to rob them, and, um, and you really learn so much about what people want, what they, what's in, what's not, how to mix fabrics, how to blend. It's really a fascinating, really a, a fascinating, fascinating um, uh, experience. Oh, so Connie says the KC Star books were bought out by CNT Publishing. That's interesting. Uh, yeah, you know, it's all coming down. Hi, John Strauss from Alabama, soon to be from Florida, right? Hi, are you in Florida yet? Nice to see you. Happy, um, happy New Year to you. Another book that I got, which I loved, and these, you know why I love it? Because, you know, I went to a Catholic school. <laughs> and for me, that meant I can't do mathematics. It didn't matter. I had great math teachers. I don't get it. There's something in this part of the brain. It does not work for me. It does not work for me at all. So what happened was that um, uh, I, it didn't matter. My mother would iron clothes and I'd get those flashcards. Ten times three. Four times eight. Seven times eight. Eight times seven. I couldn't do it. I just can't. I can't play the piano. I can't learn a, a foreign language. And I better learn Russian soon. And I can't... Um, sorry, there goes ten more. And I can't... Um, I can't... I can't do math. I can't do math. But Sarah uh, Vogelin, she did this book for Landauer, which is a beauty. And it's called Block Genius. And the math is all done for you. It's a collection of classic and contemporary uh, uh, contemporary quilt blocks. It's like a go-to reference for quilters of all abilities. And you get to discover some new blocks and mix and match and, and have them 
to create your next, you know, your next quilt. So it's like this. You know, another resource that I love, and I don't know the website name, and I'll put it on. But this is a great book, don't you think? And it tells you, it gives you all the different sizes. It tells you what you need. It shows you different layouts, and of course you can change them. But it's really a nice resource. But an online resource that I really love as well is Marsha Hahn. You know Marsha Hahn? Marsha Hahn has a, uh, a website where she does all of these wonderful uh, patterns. And you just kind of, every, uh, there's almost every block you can even imagine and then some. And I'll get that website for you. It's astounding. Now, it's been around for a long, long time. Oh, she said, oh, it's upside down? It's well, actually backwards. It's actually right. backwards. I can't help it. Facebook changed uh, something from the last time, you know, we when we started this, and now everything is this reversed image. So um, it's just called Block Genius, but you'll see it on my blog, and it will be right side right, okay? Um, so don't worry. Oh, it's called Quilter's Cash. Qu Quilter's Cache? Cash? I think it's cash. See? Cash. Cash, yeah. Yep. Thanks, Helen Marie. Yeah, Quilter's Cash. Uh, and that's uh, Marsha Hahn. Go there and take a look. But also, this book is genius. I love it. It took a lot of hard work. And it's easy if you want to start designing your own quilts. I think that's a great idea. Don't you think? Yeah. I won't design my own quilts. It's still math. It's Listen, great. there's no math. There's no math. Now, I got another magazine that you don't know about. Uh -oh. Now, I got this while I was sick. Oh, Lynn says blockgalore.com is another good one. And although I've never been there, I always go to Marsha Hahn. Um, and she's a really nice lady, too. All right, here's a magazine that I did not show you. Do I need to be afraid at this point in the mm -hmm. show? Or yeah, are you ready for this, you guys? You only see it here first. You might, I might even be ready. Actually, I need to be doing this. It's yeah. called... Are you ready? It's called Velour. It's the drag magazine. It is a drag magazine. Can you imagine? Why didn't I think of that, a drag magazine? What is a drag magazine? Well, that's what I wanted to know. That's why I had to have it. So, um, it's the, apparently this is number two in the series. I missed number one. But, uh, well... That's not a bad thing. <laughs> okay. So it's like, hand, I, I actually found it pretty inspiring, although it's a kind of a weird magazine, I have to tell you. And I can't imagine any drag queen really liking it either. And I know that, you, you know, because you do drag an awful lot, I thought you might I like it. I do not! <laughs> God, see, this is how rumors get started. <laughs> no, he's never done yeah. drag. <laughs> All right, but anyway... Let me show you the inside. I find it, really, just the graphics. I thought the graphics were kind of fun. Um, I haven't read it. It's been sitting around for like a month. Oh, here's some like, I don't know, drag pictures. I don't, I don't even think these are drag. Okay, here's what I find amusing. Hmm. It's a magazine. You look at the pictures. You haven't gotten to read it yet. Just, yeah, I only looked at the pictures. how you get the information? Yeah, but I just wanted to see the drag. See? And so I, I can't really tell you what it's about, <laughs> but it is a drag magazine. It was not inexpensive. But it's beautifully done. It feels like quality, and I couldn't be any less interested, except in... The colors are neat. The coloring is great. I think the art is terrific. I find it to be very inspirational in terms of, you know, um, kind of jump-starting some ideas I might have. But, it, you know, this actually looks like one of those old... You know, those old rags that used to get on the street in New York or in San Francisco or in Chicago, like in the 70s, you know? That's something you're familiar with, not me. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, because I was out in the 70s and, and, and 80s, and so, you know, they used to give away these free newspapers, those kind of old rags. This is just the same thing done in color and, uh, you know, perfect bound. It's really kind of pretty, but... Um, uh, but, again, I can't tell you what it's about. So I'll get back to you after I actually open it and crack it. But I, it just sounded so neat when I read about it. I don't know where I read about it, somewhere. And I thought, i got to get one of those and surprise Mr. Electric. Speaking of magazines, my new uppercase came this week, and I haven't looked at that. I either. love those magazines. These magazines are incredible. Talk about jump-starting your creativity. I just find it incredible. Um... So these look like these are these are um, fabric designers. I don't know. 
They're fabric designers. People but it has design fabric in, in this one, but it, it does have it, everything. It, this one is designed. Listen, I got to tell you something. One of these pieces are designed on spoon flower. We designed a yard of fabric for a friend of ours for uh, a gift. Um, on spoon flour, and I don't know whether you ever used spoon flour. I had not used it before. We bought the most expensive fabric that we could, you know, and the most expensive kind that we could, which was I don't know what was it, nineteen dollars, eighteen dollars a yard or yep, something like something that. Which, tough. if you're going to design your own fabric, and we ended up putting pictures of our friend on it, so it looked like you know it was very personalized to this particular person, and you know it's not like we are. Um, strangers to designing fabric. I mean, we actually did it professionally with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and sold hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of bolts, thousands maybe. Um, so we sent our file off the smooth flower and when we got it back, boy, was it crappy. I would, I, I don't think, unless I was doing something really, I don't even know, I don't, I can't imagine another, I can't imagine doing another spoon flower piece. I, I, I yeah, was, have you had different experiences? Because people love it, and if you think you're going to be a fabric designer by doing spoon flower, that's just terrific, but if you get the, the fabric back and it's the wrong color, and it's, yeah. I mean, like, off, it feels bad, it's the wrong color, it, it, for the most, for the best you can get, it's a great gag gift, but I don't think I could ever use it for my quilts. Well, I had to go back to the original file to see what we sent. Yeah. yeah I was disappointed. I mean, if you didn't know what the original was, it was probably okay, because it was a fun gift, but... Yeah, I don't know. I, Have any of you used um, spoon flour, and do you like it? Because I, and I would like to know how you design for it, and actually get what you designed. And again, we're not like, you know, strangers to fabric design, and boy, I would never go again. Never, 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 never. But that was that. Um, speaking of which, I did my first thing that I ever did. I ordered a pattern and a kit online. Now, I'm almost, you know, I've been quilting for what, 25, 26 years? And I have never done that before. And um, I don't think they do offer proofs, Karen. I think that's really the problem. Yeah. Um, I would love. Oh, so Gina says myfabricdesigns.com is awesome. Oh, that's a good resource. I'd like to try yeah. that. I, you know, Gina, I'm going to try one just to see how it works. I, you know, sometimes you get an idea. You don't want a lot of it. You want something very specialized. I think, uh, you know, I, I would love to do something like that. And, I, you know, again, this was a gag gift, so it wasn't like I was trying to match something. But, you know, we use the... The colors, what are those colors from the, you know, the Pantone colors and whatever? Nothing. It wasn't even close. I went from red to what we got was orange. Um, Louise, let me ask you. They do do proofs, but you have to pay for them. Well, maybe it's worth paying for them because what we got was nothing. Like, nothing like what we what we ordered. Um, so, Laura, spoon flour is very easy to use. She says there's a class at the Wisconsin Quilt Museum. You can't get any easier, and it can't be any more fun. But if you're not getting what you ordered, then it's not worth it if you can't use it. Yeah, it had to do with the color matching. Yeah, the and color And all the files that. were provided based on their uh, requirements, and it still didn't quite work. But that's okay. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, you know. Again, so anyway, I ordered this thing from Crafty. First of all, I have to tell you, I love the bag. Look how they send it. I thought it was really fun. Now, I I just thought it was a fun bag. It just looked like, ooh, party starting. And, of course, they, when you buy the kit, and I bought the kit at 50% off or whatever, which cracks me up because every time I open my email, Crafty sends me another damn email that says it is it's 50% off. It's 60% off. It's 80%. Today I got one. All these things are up to 70% off. And I keep going back to the same kit. It's the same price it's always been for the last three months. So, um, it's, you know, watch your marketing because it's bullshit. All right. So, and by the way, speaking of marketing, American Quilter Society, I must get one email from them a day. What's with them? Are they going under? Are they, or are they, they just hire somebody new for the job? Because I get more American Quilter Society stuff than I know what to do with. All right. So I ordered this quilt and it was Batik's and it looked very bright and beautiful. You might remember I put it online and I got, I just opened it. I got my Batik's. And actually, they look better. They look, they look good. better in this light. They look good in this light. But I have to tell you something. I was very disappointed in them. I just thought they were so dull. Now, this was going to be a brightly colored quilt. 
And I'm not really seeing batiks that... Well, they do look bright on the screen. They look it, very bright on the screen. But, but in person, also, they don't. But when you're looking at something online, yeah. it's all backlit. That's why it looks so bright. Reality is you don't see things. Well, that's bright, why yeah. you can't order fabric online. That's why you have to support your local quilt shop. Because if you don't, you end up getting stuff that looks muddy. Unless you go into your bedroom or into your living room or wherever you keep your quilts with your phone and look through that. <laughs> that's the bottom line. That would work. Wouldn't be real convenient. No, but it would work. But I mean, again, when I'm looking at this online with you right now, I'm like, wow, this is really, this is, this is They're bright. Pretty. But when I look at it in person, they're not good at all. I mean, they're very muddy. And, um, and uh, I, I'm not going to tell you the manufacturer. It's not important. But um, I, I'm just, this is more a, a um, well, it's more, it, an, you know, it's more of an issue about ordering online. Well, and it's not a bait and switch either. No. I mean, it, it's actually what they, it's actually, they had. It's it just absolutely look, is it's right. the that, vehicle that you're looking at. Right. Through. It's absolutely yeah. right. And you know, each of our uh, monitors show a different color, which means that, you know, we would never agree on fabric. Ever, ever, ever. So please make sure you, you know, okay, so you're spending another extra dollar. By the way... Interestingly enough, because these are all fat quarters, most of them are fat quarters, um, what I found was interesting is, on Craftsy, when they tell you how much, um, you know, how much fabric, in this, and I'm just talking about this one particular quilt, this is not a judgment on Craftsy, this has nothing to do with Craftsy actually, but it tells how many fat pieces of fabric, or how many yards of fabric you get in this kit, right? So it was, I can't remember what it was, like $15 or something like that, or 15 yards or something, or 14 yards, I can't remember. But then, um, when you consider how much it costs at their 50% off sale, right? Um, and then you divide a fat quarter, which is about three bucks at a quilt shop, and you <laughs> put that in, you're really not saving any, really any money at all. No. <laughs> it's just, the overhead, so it's kind of, for me, it was kind of like uh, saying, well, here, this, um, uh, you know, this pack of, of uh, energizers are $50, but I'm going to give them to you for $8. <laughs> and you go, what a savings. Well, they're $8 anyway, or maybe they're $9. Still got to read. Anyway, so anyway, so that's that. And, um, you know, the other, here's the other thing that is interesting, because I didn't read any of the reviews before I got it, but I'll be doing this quote, and I'll, I'll let you know, but... Um, the reviews were that, and I think this is true of most um, online people, mo most online fabric stores, where you don't, uh, which is unlike your in-person fabric stores. And that is, when they say you're getting a 20 by 22 piece of fabric to do this block, that's exactly what you get. And God forbid you miscut by a quarter of an inch, because you'll never get it back. Whereas when you go to a local quilt shop... You know, they give you a couple of threads more. They might give you an inch more of the fabric, you know, to allow for that kind of thing. Yeah. This, if you, and that's what the big complaint was as I looked through it, because I, again, I've never ordered through uh, Craftsy at all. Um, and, and that's, again, not been my experience. This, it's not been my experience, but that's the, what people are, are writing a lot about, that if you don't, um, if you don't, do it exactly. And also, what I thought was interesting is that a lot of people are complaining about the patterns that for people, you know, professionals who are giving out their patterns, and it's, it's on, you know, they, they email them to you, that they're not very clear because, you know, they use every section of fabric, so it's hard to kind of figure out what you're going to use. Huh. Again, that's not been my experience. It's just what I'm reading. I'll, I'll let you know. But... Um, but whatever, you know, somebody's saying, well, with their reputation, they should have a better uh, pattern. Well, when I get, when I do my classes and when I do my patterns, as you know, I always add about a quarter of a yard to everything so that you have a lot of wiggle room. A little play there. A lot of play. Anyway, let me show you something else. I talked to Paula Nadelstern yesterday. You know Paula Nadelstern. The, like, I love Hill. Paula Nadelstern. You've got to love her. Well... She sent me something, and you're going to be very interested in this. And I don't know what I did with my, darn it, I'm going to put it on my website. <clears throat> but she sent me a copy of her new book, which is amazing. It is amazing. It's called Fabric Cadabra. And so this is not the fabric. This is pieced. These are pieced, which I think is just amazing. And so she has all these they're, they're, it's just simple piecing, but it's for all these really spectacular 
results in quilting. And so you just fussy cut the prints and you and you make your self-drafted templates and you end up with these like amazing uh, blocks. And because the fabric is so busy, it's camouflaged. So you don't really see, you know, your seams are camouflaged. So you don't see any of that. And so you kind of, you kind of understand symmetry in the fabrics. It fools the eye um, just from this. And it's, it's an amazing book. Um, so wonderful. And just let me show you this. Look at Ooh, these. Ooh, that one is neat. I love that. Aren't they spectacular? Look. Look at this. You've got... You know what? Yeah, it's hard work. But look at this compared to a modern quilt, which are some nice. But, you know, if you want something that's sensational, you got to put a little work in it. It can't be a square and a square. Um, wow. Look at these. Oh, that's beautiful. That looks like a tapestry or something. It's incredible. Right. It is just unbelievable, these quilts. And it goes on and on and on and on and on and on. Um, the book is amazing. It's also by c and it is $29.95, which is a steal nowadays for these books. Now, I have to tell you something. I printed it out, and I don't know where I put the printouts. I thought I had them here, and I don't. They must be upstairs somewhere. Can I, can I say something about that book yeah. that I find interesting? You may. Usually when we get a, a, a book, um, it's you get one or two quilts on it that are really amazing. Yeah. That was one amazing quilt after another inside of that thing. I know. I know. It's a very Paula. Paula's it's amazing design. Very Paula. Now, and her, her, um, her fabric is done in symmetry, which is just amazing. Now, she has a new line coming out. It's called Kismet. Ooh, nice. All right? And she sent me like a yard of every one of these pieces. Now, here's the thing. You have to go to my blog tomorrow, but I think it's on January 26th, just to be sure. She's doing a pop-up store on PaulaNadelstern.com. And everything, all every piece of her fabric from Kismet, and let me show you this. Oh, that's beautiful. Here's one of them. She hand colors all of them. So here's one of them. Look at this one. Here's another. It's like a fussy cutty one with all different. Can you wow. See that? Wow, those are amazing. Here's another one. Maybe you see this one. I love this one. It's so, like, so oh wow! Look at oh, that's great and great colors too, right? Yep. And then there's this one. Now these are like more of the blenders. You see? Wow! But again, it's all this symmetry that when you cut it in a certain way, you end up with these amazing kaleidoscopic uh, pictures of quilt. You know, this kaleidoscopic um, results. You see this? Those are beautiful. Really beautiful. And then we get into the, the darks. <laughs> Sue Holmes wrote, why cut it? <laughs> I know, right? Why don't you just frame the damn stuff? I know. Look at this. It's so pretty. I wish you could get a really, really good look out of it. Um, yeah, but it's not just Texas, Helen Marie. Um, it's, it's all different kind of stuff. Look. Wow. Oh, I love this one for a blender. I mean, honestly, even if you're not going to do any Apollo's quotes, look at this fabric. It's just so pretty. Like, if you're an art quilter that's, like, so underwater. Yep. It's like, you know, it's so drain the swamp. Whoops, there goes ten more. Um, here's the black one. Look at the black one. Isn't that neat? And, again, there's a symmetry in here that you uh, can cut, like, uh, like Helen Marie said. Here's one, uh, the black one, but now this is in color. It looks like well, it looks like fire. a different fabric. Yeah, it's a, it's the same fabric. Wow! It's just a different colorway, and then we have it here in the green. Now, this is what I'm going to tell you about Paula's pop-up store. Which is amazing. Again, go, uh, at my blog, marklapinski.com, you'll get all this information and links right to paulanagelstern.com, and you can go there today to find out about it. But I believe it's on the 26th, and again, I printed out the, the information, and now I don't have it with me. But on the 26th, she's having a pop-up store where people who go there on the 26th for that week 
will be get the first shot at all this fabric. It's not even being released to the stores for another month or two. Oh, wow. So you can get this before anybody else. And I think if you spend a certain amount or you buy a certain amount, you get a free Polynatal Stern coloring book with it, and um, which is like all of these kind of things that you color. And um, and there's a, there's a oh also her book, oh, the book that I showed you. Um, this fabric cadabra, this one, is going to be discounted. So this book is um, $29.95. It's going to be discounted significantly. So you're going to want to go to that pop-up store. And when I say pop-up, it's only going to be open for like a week maybe. Huh. It's, not, she's, it's not part of her regular um, website. So this is a great way... Um, to find, get her fabrics before anybody else does, even before your local shop does, as well as the book, and she'll autograph it for you, and, uh, and you can get yourself a, a coloring book, too, for free. So... It's pretty cool. It's a very cool, and these fabrics, I can't wait to work with them. I can't wait to work with these fabrics. So that's that. Now, you might know that a couple of months ago, well, before I got really, before I started rejection last year, um, I uh, ended up uh, taking an Indian printmaking class, and I showed that on Facebook, and I think I showed it on my blog at the time while I was still healthy enough to do it. Anyway, um, my teacher, Shanti Jane, well, that's her name, she's from Princeton, and she, I got a box from her, like right before Christmas, or I guess, or right after Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving about, yep. Out of the blue, here's this box. Are you kidding me? She sent me, look at this, old saris that I could put into my quilts. Now, several years ago, I, when Kay Fassett had, you know, was, was coming out with new colors in his uh, shot cottons, I decided I was going to make like an Indian Catholic quilt. This is years ago now. So I kind of started putting just blocks together, and I never even finished it. You know, I was going to do this for McCall's Quilting Magazine and do a different kind of embroidery in, in each one of these, a different kind of big stitch or a different kind of embroidery quilting. And it just seemed so, it, it just was missing something to me. I like, I, you know, I love Kay Facet, um, uh fabrics, fabrics and, and the shot cottons. Mm -hmm. I love them. But something was missing, and I'm thinking, oh my god, now I'm going to cut this thing apart and start adding pieces of this in for the big stitch. Yeah, those go really well together, actually. And I love this. Um, and then she sent me, but that wasn't it. She sent me other stuff. Look at this. Look. Isn't it beautiful? And it's, it's like... It's like a shawl? Yeah, it's a shawl cotton scarf for a, a sari. That's what it is. Huh. Yeah, so here's another sari, which is much more plain, but I do love. Look at this. This is a great border, right? And that you can cut up. Then she sent me this, which is a wild fabric. I wish you could feel it. I don't even know what it is. It's like a heavily starched linen. I, I can't it's figure a out. Gauzy look to yeah, it. it's but real... it's heavily starched and it's real scratchy. Can you see it? Can you see how close? What it is, you can I, see right through it. Yeah, so. and it's really stiff. But look at all the neat. It's like, look, it's like hand painted, and then embroidered. And I thought, wouldn't that be neat? That's amazing. So, I, you know, talk about inspiration. Why haven't I done anything like this? Why haven't you? Um, so. It's not Batiste, Luann. It's, it's, it's like a gauze. It really is like a gauze. It almost looks like a really refined cheesecloth. Yes, yeah, like yeah, a very, a, like a tight cheesecloth is yep. what it's like. It's really, but they, they have these kind of things all over the place, and it's just a chain stitch, just a chain stitch. But, yeah, it's organza. Dale, that's exactly what it, Dale. Organza. And yeah. Dale. And Dale. Why did I call you Dale? Because I was thinking of our friend, you know, Dale, who's no longer with us. Um, Ann Dale from Canada, she says it is organza, and that's exactly what it is. Anyway, it's just beautiful. It's just beautiful. And then uh, there's one more that she sent me. And it's this, like... Oh, that's neat. Pretty... And it's very thin. Yeah. But it's a really pretty... 
block printed. Sorry. Yeah, that's very thin too. You can right, see right through right. the stamp. So uh, I just was so lucky. And then she, yeah, Joanne, it was hand painted and then uh, stitched with a, a chain stitch around each of it. And that's what I said. It's so easy to do. I'm not sure why I haven't done it, and I'm not sure why you haven't. Um, so I was really hi, Bruce Sandine. How are you? So I was really, really happy to find to get this, and now I'm going to start incorporating it into some of the K facet shot cottons. Speaking of extra fabric, well, let's speak of K facet first. I don't know why you guys. Oh dear God, I got my last bunch of hexagons <laughs> for the glorious hexagons uh, for for December. And here they are. And so there's my templates for my hexagon piecing with the book, um, with that great book um, by Katja Marek. Uh, so, now listen, I, I'm going to have all this information on my website as well, um, because I don't know what I did with that page. But this you can still keep ordering, and there's an auto shipment from Paper Pieces for this particular quilt, these quilts, here, at, uh, at Paper Pieces in Paducah, Kentucky. And then, of course, you can go to GloriousColor.com that has kits, templates, fabrics. This is what you want to do. So go to Glorious Hexagons. This is one we did last year, but you can do this this year, too. And they send you a little uh, packet every, uh, every month so that you can go through the Katja Marek book. And that book is called The New Hexagon, which is phenomenal. All right? Now, for 2017, ladies and ladies, there's a new uh, Glorious Garden quilt. It's done by uh, Kim McLean in Australia. And uh, she uses uh, cave fabrics, and it's through Glorious Color. And you can start this kit as well. And here it is. Look at this. It's very different, don't you think? It's a lot darker. It's written kind of more of a... Well, this it's a little brighter. But yeah. here's your, here is your the one that we did in 2016. And here's the one for 2017. All of this information is going to be on marklipinski.com tomorrow. And, um, and so... You know, this is a great way to get through the year. It's a great way to get through the year. And, again, you can get your piece packs. You can get everything. Go to GloriousColor.com. Here are um, some more. These are the uh, Kim's Garden. It's a fabric cutting templates, the templates for Kim's Garden. And you can get these at GloriousColor.com. The circles and the different sizes. It's all there. Just go to GloriousColor.com, and again, I will have all of this. I will have all this for you on the website. Now, PaperPieces.com, as I said, has the auto ship each month for the 28 hexagon blocks for the for the Glorious Garden quilt. But this project starts up again in 2017, and GloriousColor.com has all the fabric packs to get you started. And um, and both Paper Pieces and Glorious Color have the template sets to make this quilt. So, uh, and it's only 28 blocks. So you want to, you want to try this. I mean, God, this is just beautiful, isn't it? Isn't it beautiful? I love those hexes and it's so fun to kind of just sit around and do that, right? I love that. Speaking of more fabric, and again, all on marklapinski.com. Has it been, it's been, I, have I been on for like an hour? I mean, how long have I been talking? I'm ready for another drink. I'm ready for bed, time. really. Just speaking of which, I have not seen any of these bags coming in the house, you know? Yeah, well, don't. <laughs> here we go. I bought felt. I bought felt. First of all, felt is so inexpensive, I was thrilled. But you might know in April, Mr. Electric's book uh, called Who Broke the Vase. Who Broke the Vase is going to be out in April. It's going to be released in April. And he's going to be on tour reading the book. And he's going to be, um, you know, there'll be a countdown. Uh, and so, um, before I got sick, I started working on a Who Broke the Vase quilt, and Who Broke the Vase plushies, and Who Broke the Vase uh, embroidery, and a bunch of Who Broke the Vase stuff that will all be available 
released, when the book is released in April. Um, so all of those patterns will be released, and I think we're going to release them in one big swoop. I think you can probably buy them individually, but I think we're at first. You, you, do know, it all you buy the book, you get the you get the other the swoop of them for half price or something like that. Something. Like that. But anyway, I ended up buying all these great fabrics, and now I've never made a plushie before, and so. Um, so that's that's what I'm going to do. And since again, I can't see from this eye. Uh, well, I said, it's actually this eye. <laughs> I keep going this eye because that's the eye I see. Uh, it's backwards. But since I can't see from this eye, um, you know, it's going to be very slow going. And because I also have a tremor now, and because I just there's some stuff you don't really want to know. <laughs> but um, it's going to take some time. <coughs> so what's kind of cool about it is what is that m machine? thing that we were going to do some of the cuts with. What's that thing called? We don't know? No. Uh, no. I can't remember. Oh, yeah, yeah. I thought about maybe uh, maybe getting um, one of those, um, you know, I do have one of those brother machines that I was gifted, you know, one of those uh, die cut machines. And I thought I might use that to do like ornaments and stuff that are pre-done and sent or pre-cut kits. So we'll see. I've never used, I haven't used it. I've had it for two years. I haven't used it. What a surprise. Well, because I, I've been sick for two years, so I just haven't used it. So anyway, um, uh, that's that. And uh, what I think I'm going to do is, as I do these, I think I might tape them and, and show them. So that way you, you'll be able to, like, do them yourself, right? Okay. Yeah, it's kind of like a scan and cut. Is that it? It's from Brother? I know it's from Brother. Is it called Scan and Cut? That's what it is. Again, I hear mixed reviews about it, but we'll, we'll find out. You know something else I'm really interested in? Oh, you know, the quilt show with Alex and Ricky had this woman on from Spain who was doing this applique. Now, I'm not an appliqueer, but I have to ask if you saw this show because I was so amazed. It's called Appliquick, A-P-L-I-Q-U-I-C-K. And there are these tools and this foundation, this fusible, water-soluble foundation paper or fabric. And these tools to do very little tiny applique. Now, they look like two metal rods. One is, has a little fork end, like a little tongue, like a little snake's tongue. And the other metal rod is like at an angle. It looks like, like Alex Anderson's pressing. You know that, that, how you press with that wooden thing that she has? It looks like that. It's kind of like angled on wood and you press it. And that's what it is. It's called Appliquilt. Now, I, I want these tools. I want these tools, even though I'm not really an applicator, but I want these tools. I was so impressed with it. The tools are like 40. Those two little pieces of uh, sticks are like 40 bucks. Hmm. And I'm like, so before I shell out anything, I want to know. Karen, you saw it, right? Karen Evans in a saw it. She says it was amazing, and it is amazing. And by the way, I took a class. One of my very first cool classes were with Ellie Sinkevich, who, all, who, as far as I'm concerned, is the queen of applique. And she has, for years, um, done very intricate small applique. And that's where I learned how to do applique. But this thing, I don't know whether it's just a gadget. I don't know whether you really need it. I don't know, but I, I want it. I want it. But I can't see spend <laughs> $40 for two pieces of wire. So I may end up, you know, what I was looking at today on Amazon, which is horrible, um, <laughs> because I should be supporting my own quilting community if I have the money. And that is, um, I was looking at dental tools. You know, I'm thinking you need to start using the tools that we have in the garage and maybe making your own stuff. <laughs> you know, I'll get you a lathe. You yeah. can start making your own tools. The only thing I'm going to do with a lathe... What's a lathe? That's how you make legs for tables and... Oh, one turning. of those things you go... Yeah. Like, oh, right. oh, yeah. Like when we made the pens. Yeah. No, yeah. that's how I'll card my watermelons for the summer. But yeah. I, <laughs> there's no way I'm going to be doing anything else. That's... That's it. So anyway, again, tomorrow, marklipinski.com and uh, on the blog, or marklipinski's blog dot, at, dot, wait, marklipinski's blog dot wordpress at dot com. Yeah, marklipinski's blog 
www.wordpress.com. And that's my blog address. Anyway, it'll all be on the blog. You could always get there through marklopinski.com. I haven't done the blog in three months or more either since I've been sick. I hope to do that a little more. I'm really, my New Year's resolution, to be honest, is I'm going to finish my, um, my goal is before I get really too sick again and, you know, or end up on dialysis or get a new kidney is um, to finish my um, legacy. legacy quilt. I want to have that finished by June. That's my goal. And that includes all of uh, the embroidery and all of the story, and then I'll just write the memoir after that or continue. And I was very disappointed because when I got sick, I, I was in a memoir class, and I ended up having to quit because I couldn't go out. And, um, and I, and I missed it, but I did, I did well, and I would love to get into another writing group at some point once I, once the mask comes off. So, folks, um, that's it. I think I've used up more energy right now than I have, <laughs> and I think I'll sleep very well tonight. Um, is there any questions you have, or is there anything you want to comment on any of this stuff? And, um... And we'll answer them right now. I know there's a little delay, and in the meantime, can I have another little bit of coffee in here? Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, just oh, just coffee? Just coffee. Yeah. And I hope you love, uh, that's it, I hope you love the Irish coffee uh, recipe. It is amazing. Don't forget, it's uh, a jigger, a jigger, a tablespoon of, of brown sugar, and a little bit of whipped cream. And you can even use the canned whipped cream. Um, thanks, Kathy. Thanks. I'm glad I was here. Nalene, thank you. Happy New Year in Canada as well. Kathy, I am going to take a break. Ruth, thanks. It was good to see you. I'm glad you were here. Joan, I'm so glad that you were here today too. Irene, thank you for the, the, the support. And I'm going to stay as strong as I can. And I know you're pulling for me, and I know that the prayers work, and they have been, and let's just try to keep this kidney where it is. Judy, nice to see you. Thank you for coming. Um, and I am going to get some rest. Uh, Laura, it was great to see you too. Unless there's any questions, I think we're going to sign off. All right. We're going to try to do this again next week, um, and that depends on how well it goes. Uh, but it might be next Sunday again at 4 o'clock. All righty? Thanks, everybody. Have a good New Year. Bye. See you at marklipinski.com. Bye-bye. Bye. How do I turn this on? You know I can never figure out how to finish. There we go.